Geometry nodes may feel overwhelming. You may see something crazy like this and get completely lost and discouraged. I made this one and I'm scared of it. But when you learn it gradually one thing at a time, it's really not that difficult. And with just a few simple nodes and similar setups with slight adjustments, you are going to be able to create some nice looking animations like this. Start a new blend file. Then go to geometry nodes, set position, add noise, make it 4D. Connect scene time into W. That will make the noise animated. Link noise into offset. Remove the normalize checkmark. Add the subdivision surface, adjust the scale of the texture and add scale node. Add multiply after scene time to control the animation speed. That's it for the simplest one. We will use these nodes as the base for all of the other animations. Now for the second one. In this case, the noise appears to move upward, not just in the fourth dimension. Just like before, get subdivided cube, go to geometry nodes and make everything like before. But now here add position, and if we connect position into vector, nothing changes. But if we add vector math node, we can adjust the position of the texture. And if we adjust the third value, we kind of moving the texture up and down, which is exactly what we want. Now change that add into subtract. And we cannot connect scene time into that input, because scene time is a single value and vector is three values. And if we connect it, it's just gonna give uh, the same value into three inputs. But we want to connect scene time just into that third input. For that, add connect XYZ node and connect scene time into the third input. Now the particle animation behaves a little differently, but the logic remains the same. The geometry of our object doesn't actually matter, we are using volume cube, and we are not using the geometry input, so the geometry itself doesn't change. Add volume cube, distribute points in volume, set density to 100, then use set position. Same as before, add noise, 4D, remove normalize, connect seconds into W, adjust scale as you like it, and manage speed by adding multiply after scene time. Connect noise color into scale and into set position offset. Next. Instance on points. Add cube and scale it down. Add distance node and connect its output into scale. Here it's a bit odd that color output doesn't work directly as a vector, so I used separate XYZ and combine XYZ to convert color into vector. Later I discovered that you can put it directly into scale and it works fine. Add set material node and pick your material. I make some small adjustments to make it more readable and here is how the whole node tree looks like right now. And this is the entire material I used on all of the objects. Layer weight connected into emission strength on the principal BSDF, with the values of the principal BSDF set like you see in the video. Now for the next one. This setup takes our object and deforms it along its normals, pushing vertices outwards using noise. As before, set position, then connect normal into offset to check the effect. If you scale the normal up and down, you will see it move out and in. I added Suzanne to test it. It's basically like displacement modifier. Use the same noise texture, but connect the factor output into the scale input of the scale node to control the deformation strength. Use scale node to adjust the strength and then add color ramp. With the color ramp looking like this, we basically clip everything that is below 0.4 to be just black and everything that is above 0.6 to be just white. Now for probably my favorite effect in the video. The texture moves upward and creates this effect of candle or smoke and it is made by making the texture strongest at the top and weakest at the bottom. At the bottom there is basically no deformation. To achieve this, take a cube, extrude it up several times, scale it down and apply the scale. Add two subdivisions and add geometry nodes. Make sure that geometry node modifier is under subdivision. Like before, set position, add noise, position, subtract, combine XYZ and uh, connect seconds into Z. And plug the texture into scale. You can see that texture is moving up, make it 4D and plug seconds into W. So that the texture is not only moving up but also kind of deforming. The result is a little chaotic, so we use position node, separate XYZ and uh, if we preview it we can see that at the bottom the texture is fully dark and at the top fully bright. If we connect it to scale, this means no deformation at the bottom and full deformation at the top. Add divide to select the desired strength of deformation. Then add float curve if you want, it will help us adjust the fall off. Maybe add divide before W, that way the texture is moving up more than it deforms. Add another subdivision surface modifier and put it at the bottom of the stack. If you want, extrude mesh up a few more times to make it taller. Adjust the noise and add smooth modifier after all of the other modifiers. Now this one is interesting. This one has the same deformation as we had before by normals, but it only deforms when the empty is near it. First add mesh circle, select all the vertices, press Ctrl F, 
fill grid. Then press Shift A and add torus to the same mesh, making it a single object. Add subdivision surface modifier. Copy the nodes from the mesh deformed by normals and paste them here. Adjust scale and divisions as needed. I like how it looks now. Add an empty to the scene. In geometry nodes, use object info and select that empty. Position node, distance, and connect location of the object info node into the second input. Math node, subtract, and subtract the distance output from one. Connect that math node into another scale node, clamp it, and increase the value to one. And on that object info node, don't forget to switch it to relative. That way, if you move both of the objects, it's still gonna work fine. And this is it. Have some fun. You can use different textures, or even combine multiple textures. It can be a lot of fun, and possibilities are truly endless.